Hello and welcome to this build overview video. We're going to be checking out three of our builds from CES 2022, picking them apart detail by detail and then you'll see exactly what can be done with Matrix 7. Let's get to it. Okay, so we'll kick things off with the most straightforward of the three builds. And in this one, we used exclusively second generation quantum products. So the CPU block is a Velocity 2 for LGA 1700, and the GPU block is a Vector 2 RE for the RTX 3080 or 3090. Inside, we have a reference 3080 low hash rate, and both of these blocks are completely blacked out. They're the Acetal versions with the standard black backplate and we went for this really high contrast against the RGB so that the, the fine accent of the digital lighting is really shown off. Moving on, the rest of the products are also completely black. So you see our new quantum phase fans. Um, these are the non-DRGB version with the stock black corners and they are accompanied by the quantum surface radiators. That made this one by far the easiest of the three builds to put together. With only two radiators, there was only four tubes to make. And the cabling was really simple because the face fans just join together in the front of the system and one single cable goes to the back. Not much else to do after that, just directly into the motherboard and everything was done. The tubing, only four pieces were cut. The radiators are joined directly by black torque fittings and black torque fittings are used throughout. Uh, the four tubes that were made for the reference GPU just line up perfectly. Uh, it's in slot two, so the second set of ports on the distro are used. And for the CPU, the motherboard was a very good fit for Matrix 7 with only a three millimeter adjustment needed. So we used offset three fittings with an additional seven millimeter extender to make the total 28 millimeter height. And they just let us adjust the position of the ports without you being able to see it. So it looks super clean as if everything went to plan, but in reality, there's a little offset there. Uh, still the same result as if you had a motherboard with the socket in exactly the same place. Since the CPU block itself is just a Matrix 7 compatible element, it's not a foundation element since it's not in a fixed position of the case. That means that this little offset was necessary. However, if you chose a Momentum 2 monoblock, they would align perfectly between the other foundation element and the critical one in the build, which is the Reflection 2 distribution plate. So in this build, it's used in practically the same configuration as the original Reflection. We have an X radiator in the base and a P radiator at the top. And even with the original, these could be joined directly with male-male rotary fittings and 90 degrees like you see here. However, the difference is when you come to scale things up. So we'll move on to the next build and check out three radiators. <laughs> So, in this build, we step things up in terms of cooling and in terms of hardware. For the radiators, we now have three P360s, so they were all the same, all consistent, and that means in the base, an additional 14mm extender was added to bring it up to the exact same height as the X. And that's where you can see things really change with the second generation of reflections and the new surface radiators. Um, what would previously be very difficult to make with anything but an X, now you can cleanly fit a P or an S or whatever needs to work out for your needs. 
The same would also apply in a wider case if it was the choice between a 120 or a 140 format of radiator. The same goes for adding a radiator in the back side of the case. Here, just one additional tube was needed and then the extra route across the distribution plate is deployed to add the final link before it returns to the reservoir. Everything went together just as cleanly as the first time, even though the GPU is much bigger. This is actually a For The Win RTX 308090 with a Vector 2 on it, not a Radeon. That's better. And the CPU block is again an LGA 1700 Velocity 2. In much the same way, the fittings needed to be offset on the CPU block, but three millimeters in the opposite direction, and you honestly can't see the difference. And on the GPU block, an offset of 21 millimeters was needed to make up the difference between the reference position of the distribution plate holes and the For The Win 3's wider block. So a series of male-female fittings and 45 degree fittings was used on the terminal just for the, for the style of it and to keep the tubes further back so we have a bit more clearance against the case window for the uh, power cables to the graphics card. The aesthetics of this build are quite different from the first, not so reserved and very much orange. Uh, it really sits together with the silver case and all of the satin titanium and silver anodized parts we used throughout. So you can see we exchanged the Vector 2 backplate for a silver one. We added the silver convection D5 cover to the distribution plate and also chose satin titanium for all of the torque fittings and the CPU block itself. Everything came together really nicely and we achieved a high contrast between the orange, black and silver. They all sit really cleanly together. And unfortunately, we didn't have face fans in high enough quantity to do every build. So here we're using the X3M with orange dampers, as well as the Cryfuel Solid Fire Orange coolant. In the next build though, we'll just throw in all the rainbows. So here we are with the final build and this one is by far the most complicated, the most individual parts and it really shows the full extent of what's possible with Matrix 7. So in contrast to the first build, this one again has three radiators. This time they are slim radiators to make a bit of extra space for the vertical GPU. The GPU is a Fordowin 3 with a Vector 2 and active backplate installed. So really the maximum that we can offer at this current generation. Uh, it sits in slots three to eight, which is why we only had room for a slim in the base, but that keeps it out of the way of the CPU socket. Uh, on the CPU, we have a Velocity 2 and Nickel Plexi. This is an AM4 variation and where it sits on the Crosshair X570 Extreme is in the perfect position for the tubes to align with the distribution plate. So no offset threes were needed this time and it just has a male-female 28 directly from the tube to the CPU block. So it would look exactly the same tube-wise whether it had a Momentum 2 or a Velocity 2. The fans and radiators are entirely Surface S360s and VADA X3Ms. In this we have X3M DRGBs and that made cabling quite difficult on the backside because we have 18 cables just from the fans together with all the other additional DRGB cables of every product and you know things got quite messy but everything fits into the 11D no problem. So really looking forward to be able to do builds like this with the phase fan so there's again just one cable in, in the simple way we had with the first black build. For the appearance and the visual finishes, we chose to go with Mystic Fog and really show as much of the coolant and as much of the digital lighting as we possibly could. So since the blocks are laid out flat and the GPU is sitting below the elongated AM4 block, it's a really large expanse of coolant and it's just as busy at the back of the build as the distribution plate is at the front of the build. 
the nickel fittings, the nickel finish on the convection cover uh, for the D5 really helped to reflect every internal surface and bring it all together. Uh, you see little fragments of lighting over the whole build and it's a really stark contrast to the black case, the black dampers of the fans and completely neutral so it can completely change its mood just with changing the RGB setting. We hope it's been a pleasure to see the complete range of Matrix 7 and that's why we wanted to present this with three identical builds so they were all with DL11D XL and exactly the same distribution plate and that's where the reflection too really shows its advantage from the original reflection. While that worked well with one specific radiator setup, this works well with three completely different ones, with three completely different GPU blocks, and in our case, very easily with all of the motherboards. So we've gone from maximum blackness in the very first build to maximum rainbows in the last one. Thanks for stopping by to check out these three builds. We'll be back with more Matrix 7 content, so please feel free to subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment anything you have to say. Thanks for watching.